Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Online Store Success with me, your host Jody Minto. Today I'm chatting with you all about knowing your numbers and specifically the metrics you need to be paying attention to and measuring each and every month in your e-commerce business in order to make sure that you are on track and spending your time and efforts and advertising dollars in the right area. I love numbers and analytics. I don't know why. It's very strange. I never loved numbers and maths very much when I was at school, but for whatever reason now as a digital marketer, it's one of my favorite things because there's so much power in the numbers. It will tell us specifically what's working and what's not, but I know it can be really confusing to know which numbers and metrics we should be paying attention to and how they can bear as far as our peers go, what the benchmarks are for the industry and and what to then do next. So tune into today's episode and let me talk all things numbers with you. Let's go. Hello, I'm your host, Jody Minto, and welcome to my podcast, Online Store Success. My mission is to help other emerging entrepreneurs crack the code for e-commerce success for a life of uncapped income, flexibility, and fun. I'm an award-winning seven-figure e-commerce fashion founder, a certified digital marketer, and business and life coach. I'm also a Prosecco-loving wife, mother of two teens, a Facebook ads nerd, and a crazy animal lover. I've been in business for over 20 years now, and during that time, I've helped hundreds of others start and scale their online e-commerce stores through my coaching programs. I love all things business and know firsthand how rewarding it is to have a career on your own terms, turning a passion into a profitable business and the freedom and flexibility that comes with it. Each week, I'm going to share with you the ups and downs of this crazy e-commerce journey that we call life and help you start that business of your dreams or help scale your existing online store. Let's get started. So today we're talking all things metrics, analytics, numbers, however you like to call them. And today for this episode, I'm actually going to break them into two parts. I'm going to talk to you about key metrics for your online store that we need to be measuring regularly, ideally monthly, or if you have a high volume of sales, if your online store is multiple six figure or seven figure business, you will probably need to be looking at these weekly. And then I'm also going to talk about the metrics to measure in your advertising. And I'm going to give you a high level overview of where and how you compare to other people in marketing. Well, against who I'm, the accounts that I'm looking at anyway. So let's get started. The first metrics I need you to be really, really across and fully aware of each and every month is your conversion rate, your overall conversion rate for your online store. That is from the number of people that have come to your website, how many have then actually gone ahead and made a purchase? This is really, really crucial and tells us so many things. And when we start to get more traffic and more sales in our online store, we need to also then break this down from the different traffic channels that they've come from. What is your conversion rate from say organic social media versus what is your conversion rate from paid advertising sources also what is the conversion rate on particular product categories or even products what is your conversion rate by country because perhaps you have a really high conversion rate for a particular country say New Zealand where the US is lower but you're spending all of your dollars on on targeting the US and none on New Zealand so it's really really important for us to be able to see what our conversion rate is as a whole but also via those different places. I actually set up a custom metric inside of my Facebook ads for both me and any of my uh, members of Ecom Ads Academy where we have a custom metric in their dashboard that tells us what the conversion rate is based on individual campaigns because some campaigns can convert 10, 20, 30 percent where other campaigns might be one percent which might be less than the overall conversion rate of the entire store. So we then have the information to know, right, that's a really successful campaign where that one is not. So we need to turn that one off and spend more money on the other one. So having a really clear indication of your conversion rate is is important. I encourage you just to even create a Google sheet or Microsoft Excel spreadsheet and just start tracking this manually. Month on month, what's my overall conversion rate? What is my conversion rate per country? What was the conversion rate from my Facebook ads? What was the conversion rate from other organic methods such as SEO or organic social media? What was my uh, conversion rate for countries, products, etc.? It's really, really important. The next thing we need to be looking at is the average order value. 
How much are people actually spending with you on average? Because perhaps that's dropped and we need to figure out a way we can increase it. Ideally, it's as high as possible. Uh, and there are different ways where we can look at trying to increase that average order value. Perhaps it is looking at the free shipping threshold. Maybe that actually needs to be increased to encourage people to pop a second item into the shopping cart and then check out. But then we also need to consider what that might do to the overall conversion rate. So there's a few different variables here. But increasing your average order value means you don't need to make as many sales if you're making more money from each sale that you get. So average order value is really, really important. The third metric that I want you to be looking at is your repeat or your return customer rate. And if you use something like Shopify, you will be able to see this inside of the reporting and the analytics. It will actually tell you, we want this to be quite high. This tells us that our customers like what we do, they had a good experience with us and they're coming back and buying again. If it's low, we need to look at ways to increase it. How can we win back previous customers? And there's various different ways that we can do that. Or if it's perhaps really high, say it's 80% or 90%, we need to be looking at ways to bring in new customers because we're only serving the same people. We need to be always having a fresh group of new customers coming through each and every month as well. So that is something that's really important too. A fourth metric I want you to look at now, and I, and I note this by saying it's actually quite tricky, if you, especially if you're only bringing in business a little while, but your lifetime value of a customer. If you can calculate this, and there is, you know, you can Google the formula for this. I don't think face, uh, sorry, Shopify actually tells us what this is, but if we have that information, it allows us to make really informed decisions about how much money we're willing to spend on, say, Facebook ads to acquire a new customer. Let's say your customer lifetime value is $1,000. We know they come they, and they generally spend $1,000 with you. And we know that your profit margin might be X. Let's say your profit margin is 50% of that. So the cost then you have uh, is, is so $500 to, to serve that customer, to, to send those and make those goods. You've got $500 wiggle room. How much of that $500 are you willing to spend to actually acquire that customer in the first place? Perhaps you're willing to spend up to $250. So perhaps you're willing to spend $250 to get that first sale via your paid advertising, which might on the surface level look like a loss. But if you know that your customer lifetime value is $1,000, you know with confidence, it's okay, I'm going to make up that profit on the subsequent sales. But again, it's a tricky one to calculate. Even when it was my uh, e-commerce business, it was about nine years old. It was really, really hard um, to really confidently be able to figure it out. If you have some sort of subscription type uh, business, it's the customer lifetime value will be higher. Or if you use or sell a consumable product, uh, something like skincare or protein powders where they have to keep buying it, your customer lifetime value will be higher as well. So see if you can start even pulling together some figures, even if you have to go back to the very first order in your Shopify, uh, go back to the very first months of your business being in operation and, and and going through manually and seeing if those customers have come back, how many dollars they have. And I know you can filter this through inside of your Shopify around um, biggest spending you know, customers. So go in and have a look and see if you can figure that out. Another important metric is your ref refund or your return rate as a percentage on your monthly sales, because we want to be tracking that to know if all of a sudden one month you would have a 10% return rate, which is actually really good. And then the next month or, or six, even six months down the track, that's jumped up to 30% or 40% refund rate. We need to then investigate why. Why is there being such a huge increase in people returning products to you? Is it a manufacturing issue? Is it, it could be a number of things. It could be like a sizing thing. It could be maybe you've changed styles and, and whatever, but we need to be keeping an eye on that. So I encourage you again in that spreadsheet <laughs> to have, a, have a, a line that is calculating the refund rate. And you might have to go into Shopify and manually look at this. You can look at your monthly sales and then look at your dollar amount as returns and calculate as a percentage, but that is really, really important to look at. Also, another metric, we want to look at that inventory turnover rate. So there are formulas on calculating this. You'll find them online. 
or you can actually do this in an easier way. If you again have Shopify, you can go in and see uh, there's an app called Stocky and I think it's with a double K. Great app. Shopify bought it, so it's actually free. Highly, highly recommend if you don't do anything other than listening to this podcast, go and install the app because it will tell you a couple of well, many things, but it will tell you two really important things. First of all, it will grade your inventory for you as A, B or C. The A grade inventory is what you sell the most that has the highest or the quickest turnover. That is the inventory we want to be reinvesting in. And then down to the C level inventory, which is the slow, but the slow movers, maybe they haven't sold at all. Maybe you've been sitting with them for six, 12 months, but it's really, really important to know, have I got all my money tied up in C level inventory? If so, I need to go and get rid of that through whether it's a warehouse sale or whatnot. Do I have enough of the A? grade inventory if not i need to place more orders for that so that's one thing that's really important with your inventory looking at that but then also looking at the total cost of the inventory you're sitting on and then what the retail price of that is so there's there's two figures there and then going right if i've got let's say you've got a hundred thousand dollars worth of retail value of product currently on stock on hand but you're only selling $10,000 worth of product each month, that means that you have 10 months worth of inventory on hand, which is far too much. Unless it's something that is an evergreen type product that people will always want. If you have a fashion product or a product that might expire on the shelf, we need to clear that stock quickly and look at what what that A-grade product is and and figure out how we can get more of that because we do not want to be in a place where we're adding more and more and more stock and I I mean this is a common problem I've seen a lot more and more product thinking the product must be the problem we don't have enough product we mean more variations of product and people buying more and more and more and next thing you know they've got two years worth of stock on hand where they if they were to continue selling the ten thousand dollars a month they have enough inventory to to not buy spend you know another cent on more inventory before they get rid of it and let's face it if you do sell fashion there's a good chance that if you've selling something now in two years time they're not going to probably want it it's probably sort of fallen out of fashion fallen out of season i've even seen um clients with product that has elastic waists uh, you know and, and it's elastic in the in the actual manufacturing of the garment that starts to then fall apart and crumble that that's then worthless you're better to sell it even if it's at 50 percent off and just clear it out get that inventory money back to then reinvest in um, more of that a grade so what have we touched on conversion rate we have touched on average order value we've touched on your repeat or your return customer percentage we've looked at the customer lifetime value and we've looked at the refund rate refund rate and we've also looked at the inventory turnover rate now there is one other metric here that's crucially important but you will probably need the help of your accountant or bookkeeper with this um, or you need to be all over your bookkeeping because it is your net profit percentage what is your net profit percentage at the end of the quarter or even the end of the month and the end of the year because obviously we have started a business to make some money and that net profit will gauge and tell us whether or not we're on track we want that to be at least 10 percent, if not higher we don't want it to be in the negative because then we're in in all sorts of trouble so your net profit percentage whether it's monthly quarterly annually is crucial that will tell you whether or not things are going well in business or uh, hopefully if you have a good and a good accountant they will give you a heads up if you're in the negative but they don't often do so you, you need to really be all over your numbers okay so they're the metrics to measure the key metrics to measure for your online store as a whole now i want to touch on the metrics to measure for your advertising because more often than not we're spending money on ads and so we need to be knowing where are we you know going right and where are we going wrong with our advertising dollars so the first thing i want you to look at is your cost per sale 
or this could be also called your CPA, cost per acquisition or your customer acquisition cost. How much is it costing you to get one sale through your marketing? And that might be looking out over the course of a week or it might be looking at a campaign level. Is it costing you $50 to get a sale for a hundred, that's worth $150 or is it costing you $200 to get a sale worth $150? Because we need to know what that is. And we need to look at what that has been historically inside of your account. And then we need to calculate whether or not it's still profitable. Maybe $50 uh, for $150 sale is still profitable. It was for my fashion business because we manufactured our own products. But if you are reselling another label, maybe it's not. But what I can tell you right now, what I'm seeing in, in the number of Facebook ad accounts that I'm in is $50 is pretty good. $50 a sale for a product, a fashion product that might be anywhere between $150 up to $300 is, is actually really good. So perhaps, uh, and hopefully that helps also set your expectations around what you might be looking at for different types of products, perhaps pet products that, uh, you know, at a slightly lower price point, you might be looking at $20 per sale for say a sale for a $80 or $100. So we need to be measuring that based on campaign level and also, if you can, across the board for your marketing, which ties into a new term which you may or may not have heard of, your MER. Now, go away and Google what your MER is, but it's your marketing efficiency ratio and it's, it's looking at all of your spend across all of your advertising dollars and then, and then dividing that by the number of sales and figuring out you know, what am I looking at? Because some of those sales we can't easily track when it comes to uh, Facebook. Sometimes it misses some, uh, Google Analytics, all of the different things. So go away and have a look at that. Okay, so then the next metric I want you to look at is your return on ad spend. Now this in Facebook and Instagram is called return on ad spend or ROAS. Uh, if you're looking at say at all over marketing, digital marketing sense or chatting with an agency, they might call this return on investment, ROI, but it's the same kind of thing. So as far as Facebook and Instagram ads go, it's, it's how many dollars you have spent on ads in, and then what you got back. So your ROAS, let's say it might be three and three is a good place to be. We, in an ideal world, it would be three and up. Uh, but obviously there's different variables around this, but let's say that mean, well, what that means, what well, I should say is that for every dollar you've spent on the ad, you've made $3 back in sales. It doesn't account for things like the cost of goods sold, how much the product was, the shipping, the taxes, all those sort of things. It's just for every dollar you've spent on this ad, this is how many dollars you got back. So we want to be looking at your ROAS and, and it, ideally that would be a three and up, but again, it depends because if our cost per sale remains consistent, say it's that $50 over and over and over again, and they're buying your products, which is $150, and then you turn around and have a store-wide sale, and all of a sudden your average order value, the, the, the amount that people are spending on a purchase is now dropped to $100, your cost per sale might remain the same. So it will still keep saying, oh no, it's 50, I'm still getting those $50 just sales, Jody. But you've got a store-wide sale on, so that then brings down the average dollar amount spent, and then therefore your ROAS, your return on ad spend, will be reporting a lot less. It'll probably be reporting at a two versus a three. And all of a sudden you might think, ah, my campaign's doing no good. I'm going to turn it off when in fact, it's just the, the, the actual what's happening on your website outside of the ads that has changed. Your prices have changed, which in then in turn will affect your ROAS, your return on ads. But I know it can feel complicated, but don't stress. This is something that we go really deep into in my coaching programs in both uh, Ecom Ads Academy and also Online Store Success, which is coming up for enrollment very soon. More on that later. Um, but talking metrics to measure in your advertising, then what I want you to also then look at after cost per sale and ROAS is link click that. Uh, link click to conversion rate percentage. You, we want this to be above 1%. So 
how many people, sorry, not link clicked, link, uh, your click through rate, I should say, sorry, that's a custom metric I've gone off on a tangent, uh, your click through rate on your ad campaign. So if you're running a sale ad, so it's, it's a sales objective purchases, we want that click through rate to be higher than 1%. If it's lower than 1%, that indicates that the ad creative itself isn't doing what we want it to do. It's not, a, it's not compelling people to actually click on it and click through to your website. So we need to look at the creative. Now, side note here, if you start running traffic ads, you will see that that click through rate will be much higher. It'll probably be like six or seven or eight percent. And that's because Facebook will show that traffic ad to a audience that generally has a lower intent to purchase so a lower quality audience. It will be shown to the clickers because Facebook knows whether we're a clicker or a or a shopper. And so if you're a clicker, all of a sudden you'll start seeing that ad and you'll be clicking through, which is your usual behaviors that Facebook knows, but it, it won't, it doesn't really care whether or not they then go on and purchase because you've asked Facebook for traffic, i.e. people to click on the ad, you haven't asked for sales. So keep that in mind. But for generally speaking, we want a sales purchase conversion ad to be higher than 1%. If it's not, we need to look at the ad creative and um, see if we can improve, improve that and increase that. Then we also want to look at the ads to cart. If there's been no purchases, but the click-through rate is at 1% or higher, if people have been adding to cart, we can see that perhaps, you know, it's, it's moving in the right direction. But what we need to look at is what's then stopping them from adding to cart. Is your shipping too expensive? Are you asking them to sign up for a, an account where they have to create a password and then get a confirmation and it's a double opt-in and, and, and blah, blah, blah. And then you'll see all this big drop off. So, if we're seeing some ads to cart, we're seeing some life, we're seeing signs of life, and that's a good thing. It might just be a case of we need to let that ad r run longer in order to finally get some of those people to actually purchase. And then lastly, we want to be looking at the CPMs, which is your cost per impressions. Now, ideally, this will be cheaper, as cheap as possible. You will see this anywhere probably between $10 and maybe even $40, and this is determined by the audience, how competitive the audience is that you're, you're going for in your, in this ad auction. Um, and sometimes the country, sometimes for the U S it's actually a lot cheaper, the CPMs than what it is for say Australia, but we want to be keeping an eye on this. And if you have an ad that all of a sudden is got a really high, you know, costs, or it's just not doing what you want, have a look at the CPMs and see how high they are. If they're sort of sitting at 30 or $40, we need to look at the audience. The audience is too small, too granular, or too competitive, and we need to look at perhaps using a broad audience. So we have touched on so much today. Like I said, I love analytics and numbers. I don't know why I am a weirdo, <laughs> but I hope these have helped you and guide you. Feel free to re listen to this a few times if you need to, but if you need even more help of this, if you need tutorials and see where to read it and how to read it and how to pull it all together, be sure to check out my online store success program, which is opening for enrollment. I think it's the the 5th of August. So very soon, um, where I will help you with this even more. So Thank you for being here. I hope you've enjoyed this and hopefully I can see you inside of Online Store Success. There will be a heap of free launch events leading up to it as well, webinars, challenges, things like that, where you can get a little bit more of a taste of how I work and what I teach and whether I'm for you uh, for free and also learn lots and lots of great strategies to go away and implement into your business. But I'll also be sharing on more information about how I work inside of Online Store Success, what's included, what you get, all that kind of thing. So be sure to sign up to the wait list at the bottom of the show notes here or go to onlinestoresuccess.com and you'll be the first to invited to those free launch events and you'll be the first invited to enroll into Online Store Success and we will be having some early bird specials. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. Thanks for being here. Enjoy your week and same time, same place next week. Bye for now. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Online Store Success with me, Jody Minto. If you loved it, please share it with your friends on Instagram and tag me at I am Jody Minto so I can say thank you. And if you really want to make my day, please go ahead and leave me a review on Apple Podcasts and give me a follow. If you'd like my help in starting or scaling your online store, be sure to check out my free resources and programs at jodyminto.com. Thanks again and... Same time, same place next week. Bye for now.